and uh, for low temperature application uh, uh, in the application where you want to understand loss on drying or volatile content instead of ceramic crucible you can al also use uh, standard aluminum crucibles for uh, the low temperature application now uh, method uh, parameter so uh, what will be the start temperature and what will be the end temperature to design any uh, method so it should be there should be three minutes before your event start and there should be at least two minutes after the event completes and this uh, time so what will the temperature it depends on the heating rate so let's say my heating rate is 10 degree or 10 kelvin per minute then i should have 30 degrees celsius or 30 kelvin before the event and 20 degree or 20 kelvin after the event of my temperature range to understand the prop or to to capture the, that event completely so that means that should be the uh, temperature range uh, cooling rate typically uh, heating and cooling rate so normally we use 10 to 20 kelvin heating rate uh, kelvin per minute heating rate in dsc and tga we can go up to 30 kelvin per minute also if the sample is exothermic restrict down your uh, heating rate in the range of one to two kelvin per minute and uh, if you are using a modulated dsc technique then always you will have one or two degrees celsius uh, uh, heating rate and the cooling rate uh, uh, it depends especially in the case of uh, uh, dsc it depends on the cooling system and the configuration what you have opt for what is the intracooler or liquid nitrogen depending on that you will have the different cooling rate possible now uh, influence of uh, what would be the influence of this heating rate and cooling rate so uh, if i have a higher heating rate the resolution is poor uh, if i have a lower heating rate i will have a better resolution but then signal to noise ratio is better with the higher heating rate whereas it is poor in the uh, lower heating rate the temperature gradient is higher if i have a larger sample with the higher heating rate whereas if i have a low temp uh, lower heating rate the temperature gradient is uh, minimized and uh, uh, the measurement time is uh, shorter if you take a higher heating rate and the measurement time is a bit longer time if you have a lower heating rate. Uh, you can see some of the effect of the heating rate uh, onto the results. So for example, uh, uh, this is a decomposition of uh, uh, benzoyl, per uh, benzoyl peroxide uh, with a different heating rate. You can see uh, the, the, the sharpness or you can see the uh, signal to noise ratio and also in similar way you can also see the melting uh, sharpness as a function of uh, heating uh, rate now there are some artifacts possible uh, in the dsc and we have to understand many of these artifacts what is the cause behind this kind of artifacts so you can see the first one is because of the movement of the samples so if a sample moves you will have this kind of uh, oops sorry you will have this kind of uh, artifacts then uh, if there is some abrupt change in the heat transfer between the pan and the DAC, for example, uh, the slightly shift in the pan due to the uh, difference in the expansion coefficient. Let's say there's a mismatch in the expansion coefficient of your uh, uh, sensor and your bot uh, and your pan. In that case, you will have this kind of artifacts. Then uh, mechanical shock. Let's say the table was moved or some sudden uh, impact was done. Then you will have this kind of uh, artifacts. Uh, entry of cool ill cool air will give you this kind of artifacts so uh, that is why it is recommended that your dsc should not be in the front of door or just below your air condition then uh, a discharge of a static charge or high frequency interface will also give you this kind of uh, artifacts and then if the crucible leads open if it was not completely hermetically i mean it was not pinhole and it was hermetically sealed and high temperature it may open so you will have this kind of artifacts and if the lid was open during the measurement, if the furnace lid was open, that will also cause this some kind of artifacts. Now choosing the baseline. So uh, there are various possibility of selecting the baseline. You can see uh, spline or uh, horizontal right or uh, uh, integral horizontal or a, a straight uh, baseline. This kind of uh, uh, baselines are possible. So in first one, you can see it was a post curing measurement of your sample. And because of the change in the CP, your baseline is shifting towards the higher side. Uh, whereas in the C event, uh, you can see the evaporation. During the evaporation, the sample mass is uh, 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 reducing. And because of the loss in the sample mass, you can see your baseline is shifting towards the higher side. So depending on this kind of uh, uh, observation you have to select appropriate uh, baseline what will be the effect of the baseline so you can see the uh, melting of water enthalpy value will be different if you take a different baseline so this is the effect of baseline on the uh, uh, enthalpy value 
Sometimes you also use extrapolated baselines, like for example, onset of uh, uh, temperature or the glass transition temperature, or onset of some event decomposition, OIT kind of studies, or the change in CP at the glass transition event. For those kind of analysis, we take an extrapolated baseline. And uh, finally, I would uh, uh, like, uh, if possible, uh, you can think over this: uh, what will happen if we take a wrong uh, baseline or it completely depends on the user to user. So this is one single event, but the different user has integrated it or uh, understood it in a different way. So you can see how uh, different interpretations are possible with the different baselines, and it may be possible that you will completely misunderstand or misread uh, this event. So this was actually uh, uh, a glass transition. I mean, this is uh, the sample is EPDM polymer, EPDM. And you can see this is actually a glass transition temperature followed by the melting of some of the crystalline phase. But the same event was uh, uh, interpreted differently with by the different user because of the different uh, baseline selection. Uh, so uh, the, in the final conclusion, I would say this is uh, the product line of Matlatolito DSC. Uh, we have discussed most of the tips and hints for the DSC and TGA. But we can also discuss uh, DMA, TMA, uh, and hot state microscopy in near future. Uh, if possible, we'll do the similar uh, uh, talk for the other instruments also. And uh, some of application supports, uh, you can refer to these uh, application supports available on the Matlatolido website. So you can have uh, handbooks for the food, pharma sample, thermoplastic, and thermosets. And uh, we also have uh, evil gas analysis application notes. So these are all available with the Matlatolido as a uh, 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 reference literature and always uh, uh, on-demand webinars are available on the various topics. Many of the webinars are already uh, available in the Matlatolido websites and we also have some of the beautiful videos for sample preparation, standard practice, how to do DSC analysis, TG analysis, so many other beautiful videos are available on YouTube also. I would recommend you if possible uh, have a look at those uh, literature available with the Matlatolido. So uh, with this, uh, uh, I, I think the, the talk, talk is open for the question answers, possibly. So those uh, participants who have the uh, question, they can unmute their lines and ask the questions. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yeah, my, my question is, this DSC TGA is yeah. which standard? Uh, you mean the calibration standards or the method by which we perform the DSC TGA analysis? Yeah, method standard. Actually, okay. we have what your instrument. I am from Sumba Polymers. Okay. So we have got your instrument of uh, TGDSC. Correct. So I want to know how, by which standard this instrument is being manufactured. Yeah. Oh, uh, standard for the manufacturing of the TG. Okay. Uh, probably I would. Uh, testing, testing. Oh, testing. So, sir, there are various uh, standards to do many analysis. There are some HTM standard which recommend uh, the temperature range, heating rate in TGA. There are some other standards, even some Indian standard or also some uh, Dean standards are available. So, uh, uh, probably, if so, if, uh, as you said, you have a, uh, a DSC instrument, Matlatolid or TGA DSC instrument at your end. Along with this uh, instrument, you will have one uh, book that is called uh, Thermal Analysis Practice. At the end of that book, there are I think more than 200 standards are mentioned for the different kind of analysis. It, it covers DSC, TGA, DMA, TMA. So there are various standards and uh, uh, um, some of, not some, I think more than 200 are all, also mentioned. It completely depends on sample to sample, sir. So pharma may follow some different standards and may possible that academia may follow some different standard, polymer industries may follow some different standards. My, my question is specific. My customer is asking, Mm -hmm. to test the uh, TGDSC as per standard ISO 11359-2. Correct. So whether whatever TGDSC I am doing in my instrument is according to this standard or not. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, 
from uh, from our side i think we have to look at the standards that what is the specification of the standards if it is a tga or dsc spe uh, specified specified standard then definitely metallurgy or tg or uh, dsc will follow that standard definitely so if you can uh, share those standards which you have just mentioned if you can share those standard numbers then we will have a look at uh, the literature of that uh, standard and we will uh, revert back to you uh, hello sir good evening yeah good evening uh, uh, this is manjunal from aliak stream yeah okay so recently we have purchased uh, dsc uh, recently we have purchased dsc 3 star model so i would like to know how to calibrate uh, cell constant Correct. of uh, this thing sir uh, cell constant yeah uh, usually we measure it for the ta instruments usually before starting we have to use aluminum oxide sapphire and to cali uh, calibrate the cell so is there any option for this instrument to calibrate the cell before uh, um, uh, at least once in a six months and all these things so for temperature calibration and enthalpy calibration i think along with the dsc instrument you have uh, this indiaman z standards which will calibrate for uh, uh, temperature and the enthalpy yeah suppose if i want to do the specific heat okay cp uh, yeah, cp measurement yeah for cp yeah. measurement yes we also we also have uh, so that is not a uh, part of calibration but that is a reference for the cp measurement so there is a hdm method for uh, cp measurement that is called cp by sapphire so that also available with the metal toledo you will have uh, the standard sapphire disk which will use which will be used as a reference so you will run a uh, sapphire measurement you will run the blank measurement you will run the sample measurement then you will subtract the uh, yeah. blank the sapphire and the blank uh, sapphire and the sample and then you will compare the sapphire and the sample cp value yeah that actually we have it received uh, along with this instrument is this a separate uh, in, uh, separate we have to order it or not uh, i am not uh, aware of uh, 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 the configuration what you have uh, opt for uh, probably i will just have this dsc three star model okay uh, my colleague pratik is there uh, i will ask pratik pratik if you can uh, uh, answer the question yeah sir so basically sir if you have been offered the cp software so you know uh, we need to check exactly what type of configuration we have offered to you so accordingly sir uh, it is a standard supply you know when you actually get a cp as a software but it is completely depending on what type of configuration you have been offered so we will check uh, that and we will get back to you sir Uh, because i'm telling you this is very important for us to understand the specific heat of the uh, different polymers uh, sometimes we have to understand the specific heat of the metal and metal also so uh, i don't know because recently i moved to this company so i wanted to know whatever you supplied uh, so i need a lot of technical information unfortunately we are not able to contact technical people only the instrument engineer will come but technical people will not come it is the bad side part of uh, this metal i don't know how to uh, resolve this issue 8th march uh, sir we have uh, taken note of this and we will come back to you you know once we are finished with this uh, particular session so we will support you as soon as possible sir uh, just uh, uh, this ali access bangalore please take this notice as important Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay, because we have uh, purchased DMA, DSC, TG, everything almost all the thirty to forty percent of instrument from Metlab. So if we are not getting the application support from them, is a waste of uh, this thing, no? Sir, already uploaded. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. We will, you know, uh, definitely will look in this uh, on priority, and we will solve your issue, sir. Yeah, please. As soon as early, yes. early, uh, early, you have to solve this issue, huh? Please. Okay, sir. So sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, okay. Thank, you, thank you very much, sir. Huh? thank you thank you sir yes uh, mr vignesh uh, uh, raised his hand yes. so can you vignesh vignesh yeah vignesh myself and uh, mr gautam and uh, uh, okay yeah we are okay okay okay, okay. 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 okay sir i think please as early as possible please come and give the training on uh, my team members uh, regarding this so that we can efficiently utilize your metler understand the features of metler tolerator so in the yes, definitely okay yes sir. Uh, yes, okay. Sir. yes sir yes sir definitely sir. thank you, thank you. Okay. yeah thank you
मिस्टर अमित तिवारी यू मे प्रोसीड इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द ग्राफ एक्चुअली I just now I have started with the original committee. Uh, my colleagues has uh, changed their job, so I want to know that from where I can get uh, the interpretation of the uh, graphs which I get in DSA and DGA. Okay, so sir, in uh, so as I said, you can start with uh, some of the beautiful videos. That is a very basic available just on the YouTube. Or else, if your PC is connected to the internet, then you can go into this your software. In software, you will have uh, the basics. You will have webinars and all other useful resources available. And in help section also, you will have all the uh, basic understanding. I mean, basic uh, uh, clarification to interpret the graph. And, Then we can also uh, uh, we can also uh, do one uh, one small uh, uh, webex training also that is also possible we can summarize some of the basic requirement and then you can start measurement some of the samples and when you get some sample analysis you can come to us for some further training that is also possible from our side okay and uh, so i will contact you after now yes uh, sir webex not thank you but maximum are So I would recommend to uh, to have a look at the videos on our YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. Those are very beautiful videos. Not a picture of them, but a picture of them. We will send you the video also. Thanks for your suggestion. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. So Chandrasekhar, you can ask your question. Uh, thank you. Hi, uh, this is Chandrasekhar from LM Wind Power, Bangalore. So this my question. Yes, was, so yeah, this my question. How that uh, uh, DSC machine or facility in that Bangalore plant? So the T how that uh, uh, network. Uh, how uh, LM the network was cannot able to uh, connect directly that our network your system system is provided by you only that cannot able to connect our uh, our network to that system so how do you do that no no every time what happen you take on the graph you take on the pda by making i take it make it in the pen drive and copy to in our system that so how do you that conclude it is be connect to our network the our, our uh, and the uh, organization network announce it okay you mean the your internal inter, internal network uh, yes right directly connect okay. over uh, i think uh, i think it's it's not that uh, big problem it's a, a big it is because of the conflict of ip address of your uh, uh, i mean because there is ip address for your instrument also and there is ip address for your internet uh, service also that is because the reason your pc is stand alone uh, our service engineer can uh, uh, discuss with your it uh, uh, team and then it will, it can be easily resolved sir it is just a conflict of ip address between your network and the instrument no but i have discussed several time to metlo metlo team in bangalore and who is the dealer discussed several time but is not able to solve the issue sir Uh, have you, have you uh, got a timetable okay sir we, uh, what we will do is uh, we take down your query and then i will ask a concerned person uh, from the uh, uh, bangalore and as well as from ho to solve uh, your issue and you uh, know take uh, action on priority sir yeah please please uh, okay okay i'll i'll take your i'll take your query sir i'll note down your query sure sure thanks thanks yeah yeah thank you sir yeah uh sale ask uh, yes, i sir i jimit uh, it's a nice presentation first of all thank you for that nice presentation uh, my question relates to i know uh, pan material of construction and its variability in the measurement so if we are using the different uh, material uh, of construction for the pan then what will be the variability in the results so uh is it about tg or dsc dsc i am talking about dsc okay yeah so uh, uh, different material will have a different thermal conductivity and the cp value of these materials are also different so the higher the thermal conductivity of the pan material better will be the uh, signal coming from the measurements Uh, the ideal is a uh, gold or platinum but you know those are expensive so that is the reason we always go for the second best possible that is the aluminum uh, now larger the volume of the aluminum crucible uh, it will 
required a larger and I mean, I mean because of the CP value it requires a larger energy and that is why you will have if the larger the volume that means larger the mass of the crucible you will have slightly compromise on the uh, sharpness or the sensitivity of the signal uh, then sometimes it is also uh, it is also important to understand whether your sample is reacting with the material let's say your sample is reacting to the copper crucible then you should not use the copper crucible unless your intention is to understand the reaction between i mean the effect of copper on your sample if it is case with the aluminium then you should restrict that you should not use aluminium instead of that you can use a platinum crucible or gold crucible or gold plated aluminium crucible then uh, if you, if you are working in the field of uh, uh, pharma or chemical engineering and you are looking at the uh, safety parameters in that case you can use uh, safety crucibles that that is high pressure crucibles uh, so uh, for uh, let's say your sample is inner to most of the uh, uh, metals whether it is copper uh, uh, platinum or the aluminum and you are looking at just a melting or glass transition kind of event then uh, uh, the the choice will not alter much or i would it, I, I think it would be completely uh, fine whether you choose whether you use platinum crucible or aluminum crucible or the gold crucible so uh, that is how uh, the crucibles uh, act in the measurement Okay, just for one example, just I am giving you. Uh, like uh, it's a very small polymer and very common polymer is PVC. Correct. You know, uh, and if uh, someone is giving a known sample of PVC, you know, and in that case, if you are going to use even aluminum or copper, how it will we have uh, if we are not going to use a platinum or something like this? Okay, so uh, for for PVC, mostly you will see glass transition temperature or melting. Uh, if you use aluminium crucible, even for the unknown combi unknown composition of PVC compound, it will be perfectly fine. Now, uh, copper crucible will have some problem, especially when you use instead of nitrogen, air or oxygen atmosphere, because now copper will have catalytic effect and it will in it will reduce down your OIT value. Or the uh, OOT value of your uh, of your PVC if it is in the copper crucible. Third point is you should not go to the very high temperature, especially if unknown composition or even for the known composition of PVC, because at high temperature when PVC will start decomposing, it will split HCl, and uh, uh, it is it is also the uh, 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 because it is a strong acid, it is also on a pro prolonged time may cause some kind of contamination to sensor, but also it will. Uh, eventually end up in your uh, lab environment so that is also one of the li limitation with the, this kind of uh, sample okay so what should be the uh, the temperature limit that we should keep for such kind of samples uh, it should be at least 20 to 30 degree lower than the decomposition temperature of pvc let's say you are just interested in the glass transition and melting uh, i uh, if i'm not wrong the glass transition would be somewhere from 60 to 80 degrees celsius for the pvc and the melting is up to 200 so there are actually doublet kind of around 180 200 if i'm not wrong that is a melting peak so if you are interested in glass transition and melting then you should go slightly below the melting point but not to the temperature where your sample will start decomposing and if you are just looking at the glass transition and the melting then make sure that you use the nitrogen as a matter gas and not as a air or oxygen okay thanks thank you jimit hello yes sir yeah i have one question regarding this degree of pure purity uh, baseline. Okay. It depends on the selection of that baseline. Mm -hmm. Why it cannot be there in the system itself? Because it depends on how how you select it. So it will vary the result based on the person to person for the same graph, right? Uh, so how can yeah. it be eliminated? Yes and no. So let's see again, just talk about the same uh, graph. Uh, as I yeah. said, this is the glass transition temperature and the melting of EPDM. Now, if you know the glass transition temperature of the polymer or any other samples will vary with, I mean, it will shift with the heating rate or the cooling rate, I mean, heating rate. And also there are some parameters which affect the glass transition temperature. So I cannot say that EPDM, whether it is whatever form, the glass transition temperature will remain the same. Now, uh, I will show you one more example, this one, so uh, the D one, the fourth one. So here, 
what we have it is a pet polyethylene terephthalate okay the commodity polymer used for the water bottle and beverage bottle uh, right. when i do the second heating of the same same sample i will not see this exothermic cold crystallization this is this is only visible in the first heating so uh, because the sample itself will uh, will have a different nature Uh, depending on the, uh, uh, I mean, depending on composition, depending on the thermal history, depending on the cycle, thermal cycle, and all, we cannot define ideally. For it, it is not like uh, like a FTIR or kind of thing that this bond peak will have the same thing. It is not possible in the thermal analyzer, sir. So because of that, the user has to understand the nature of the sample and the behavior of the sample, and according to the user's understanding, the appropriate uh, uh, baseline should be selected. Because for degree of pure, we have got variation. We are not sure yes. whether we are doing is correct yes. or not correct. Right. Yes. So uh, degree of curing and also if your, I mean, let's say it's it's a thermo a thermo setting polymer epoxy. Yeah. If it is partially cured or completely cured, how much percentage of curing has happened? The area under the curve will also be varying, and the peak temperature of the exotherm uh, thermicity will also vary. also the glass transition temperature of partially cure and completely cure epoxy will be different the higher the percentage of curing you will see the glass transition temperature will shift towards the higher temperature side so because of the nature of the sample user has to understand the behavior of the uh, uh, i mean the nature of the sample and what what kind of baseline is appropriate for those kind of uh, results uh acha acha for thermal analysis not with metler but universally i mean it is impossible to define that okay if you have this sample then this should be the uh, baseline it is it is uh, practically sir not possible okay thank you <coughs> okay any other questions so if there are no any questions uh, let us conclude this particular uh, presentation so we thank uh, mr ankit joshi who is technical application consultant with metro to do india we have a head office at mumbai and we have application lab at mumbai as well as in hyderabad for entire customer support for entire method development as well as any kind of technical queries if you have you can come down to our lab anytime uh, we have very nice value selling tools like you know ankit have mentioned uh, about different kind of uh, the uh, application handbooks we have a very unique uh, magazine we call it as user com so we published this user com uh, in a year twice we published this user com which includes entirely recent trends uh, of application which are there in the uh, in the industry and we focus on uh, various uh, different topics like interpretation of curves or maybe you know kind of different application innovative application we include into the user com we also have a youtube channel Uh, wherein you know all sample preparation uh, guidelines and then uh, what are all effects uh, which are there because of which you know you will see the variations in different phase transitions like today's webinar also we have it on youtube so this different kind of knowledge sharing uh, content is there on the youtube channel so please sub subscribe to our youtube channel and in case if you feel uh, you know in case if you want any kind of further support to us we have regional offices uh, pan india you can you know contact our regional uh, sales representatives uh, they will you know forward us the query in case if it is direct support is required from the head office and we'll try to give you the solution on priority so uh, we thank you all that you have taken your precious time and uh, connected and uh, you know make the session uh, you know successful as well as interactive so thank you all thanks a lot yeah thanks, thanks.